What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here and it's time for another smartphone smackdown. This time we are comparing the old against the new, the BlackBerry Torch 1, the 9800 versus the unannounced, unreleased BlackBerry Torch 2 9810. Now certainly the Torch 2 is going to outperform the Torch 1, but the question we're going to answer is by how much? And when the Torch 2 finally comes to market, is that difference going to be worth the upgrade for you? So without further ado, let's go ahead and dig in. So let me run through the specs very quickly of these two phones, at least the specs that matter most. The Torch 1 has a 624 megahertz processor, which is relatively anemic, a screen resolution, of course, measured diagonally of 360 by 480. The Torch 2, which we have right here, has a 1.2 gigahertz processor and a screen resolution of 480 by 640. Uh, I'm not sure if we have NFC technology in the Torch 2. It's been reported that it does. I haven't had a way to test it yet, but I am sort of looking into that. Uh, and no hotspot functionality here on the Torch 2. I do want to say that all the tests we're doing here, this is obviously a pre-release software build and pre-release hardware, so things might change by the time this finally comes to the market, uh, presumably as an AT&T exclusive. So before I go through and jump into all the tests, let me do a complete battery pull on both. So we're starting from, oh, pardon the joke, apples to apples. And you'll see the difference here on the back, so I'll talk about the hardware differences in just a minute. Uh, this is probably one of the worst backs of a phone I have ever seen. Trying to get the back off the Torch 1 is uh, torturous. So I'll go ahead and yank this battery. And I will come back once both batteries have been pulled um, so we can go ahead and start the test. You can at least see some of the, uh, the boot up times of these phones. So we got that one pulled. Go ahead and pop the back back on. Putting the back on is much easier. So you should see that. Power on in just a moment. We'll go ahead and pull off the back of the Torch 2 which is marketably easier. Uh, they are both using the same battery, uh, the FS1. Not sure if that's a battery that'll make it into a production or not. Go ahead and pop this guy out. Go ahead and pop this back in. There we go. And uh, I'll come back in a few minutes when both are up, launched, and ready to go. And if you guys wanna see the times that it takes for both these to boot up, uh, I'll leave this as sort of B-roll at the end of the video so you can watch the boot up time. So it looks like I'm actually a dirty liar. All right, so both are booted up. It looks like I'm a dirty liar. The Torch 2 actually took longer to boot up uh, than the Torch 1 did. All right, so both of these are now launched and ready to go. I am going to talk about build quality and hardware. I'm gonna talk about OS and talk about speed, apps, screen, and all that good stuff. So let me show you what version of uh, the OS these are running. Of course, OS 6 and OS 7. Just so you can at least get a fair comparison from where we are. So let me go ahead and jump into settings or options. Let's go ahead and go to device. There it is. And let's find out about this device. All right, so this is running version 6.0.600 on the Torch 1. And the Torch 2, I always get the phone button confused with the options because they look kind of similar. Am I the only one there? All right, and options here, we'll do the same thing. You can see some differences in the uh, device as well. Just dropping a connection to a Bluetooth headset I was using. And we'll go ahead and get the same bit of information here, device versions. And you can see that this is running version, let's see, where is it? 7.0.123, which I was told might be the shipping version that AT&T ships with. Uh, but I had conflicting reports that there is a uh, 0.181 version out there. So you can take that for what it is. Now you can see all of the different nuances here. Let's go ahead and exit out of both of these. Great, 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 and super great. All right, so now we're looking at phones. They've both been sort of, well, not hard reset, but soft reset, battery pull. You know what I'm saying. All right, so let's talk about the build and the hardware. I know a lot of the knocks I keep hearing about the Torch 1, I had this as well, was that it felt super top heavy when you were typing. Uh, you're worried that you're gonna sort of fall off here. Uh, well, that's the same problem here on the Torch 2. They both feel almost identical uh, from a weight distribution standpoint, something to keep in mind. In fact, these phones look almost identical uh, from every standpoint, uh, with the one exception being the back. It's got a little bit of a different back here. You don't have the uh, horizontal lines, you know, this vertical grid. Both are made of hard plastic. This one, of course, is much easier to take off. And this unit is devoid of the Torch branding. By the time this hits market, I'm sure it'll say Torch there, uh, but they both feature that five megapixel camera. 
and the sides, everything looks just identical. Ports are in almost exactly the same places as the original. In fact, when you're out on the streets, there's really no way to even tell, especially if you have a case on that someone has a Torch 2 versus a, uh, a Torch 1. Something to keep in mind. Let me go ahead and exit out of everything here. I'm opening up all kinds of uh, applications as I'm talking. But just because they look alike doesn't mean things are all the same here. Uh, if you go ahead and take a look at the keyboards, one of the knocks I had on the keyboard was that there wasn't much key throw uh, as you're using the Torch 1. Certainly because of a slider, there's not much room. So you didn't get the sort of clackiness that uh, you know, you're used to on, say, a bold. Um, 9800 or one of those type bold series. Um, however, if you look at it on the Torch 2, the keyboard has much, much, much more throw. Unfortunately, you can't see that on camera, but the keyboard just feels much better. Um, certainly true to uh, its bold lineage. So if you're thinking about getting a Torch 2 versus one of the upcoming 9900s uh, or the CDMA version, uh, this keyboard is actually quite outstanding. One of the other things that I really like about the Torch 2 versus the Torch 1 it's actually, and I didn't think it was even going to make a difference, but is this trackpad here. Uh, it's got way more tactical feel to it. It just feels very, very nice in the hand. Um, so let me go ahead and close out of this. And let's go ahead and do a quick, let's say I want to do a search here. And you can see some other differences here on the phone. This has been reported uh, earlier, but there are some keyboard differences here. So very subtle. Uh, you've got support for different languages here. I know a lot of you are outside of the US. So you can see all kinds of different soft keyboard support. Certainly it's not going to change the keys that slide out. Um, but it will change the soft keyboard. So a ton of different language support here, which is quite nice. All right, so now let's talk about uh, some more of the hardware. So this prototype is missing the color on the send and end keys. Who knows if that's gonna make it uh, on the production model. This is the second prototype that we've actually had our chance to take a look at. Uh, and on the previous version, it didn't have color on the send or end keys as well. So maybe this will be how it's gonna look when it hits your pocket. All right, so let's talk about speed. This is a much faster processor, about twice as fast. Uh, it's got a ton more RAM, but does that really matter in real world tests? Let's go ahead and try some applications. Now this might not be necessarily indicative of just the spec bump, might be the OS is a little bit more fluid. An OS 7 can handle things a bit better than OS 6, but at least you can get sort of a sense of how things look. So I was thinking a lot about what I wanted to test and I figured something that was the same on each were some games. Let me go ahead and launch some of the games here. I'll do it on the Torch 2 and go ahead and find it. And you can also notice that there is a ton of AT&T applications here spewn uh, about. So you can definitely tell this is going to be an AT&T launch device. You can see the App Center there. Go ahead and check out games. And look at that, we've got a few of the similar games. The word mole icons look different, but we've got Brick Breaker here on each. So let's go ahead and try and launch both of these at the same time, which is oftentimes harder than it looks. And see if there's any sort of speed difference. And look at that, the Torch 1 actually opened it faster than the Torch 2. Let's go ahead and hit play. And those are about the same. And everything else, you know, screen controls are screen controls. And as you're looking at this, you might be able to see a difference on one of the other uh, main differences between the two, uh, and that's the screen. The screen resolution here on the Torch 2, the 480 by 640, looks absolutely beautiful. And it's probably not going to translate that well. Uh, from a camera to video and then to your computer, depending on what resolution you're seeing it at. Take my word for it, the screen is absolutely beautiful. Uh, texts look really, really, really crisp uh, and very, very bright and vibrant. The screen doesn't look washed out like the Torch 1 does. You can see that sort of increased resolution uh, when you're just looking at even some icons. So look at the WhatsApp uh, app icon there. You can see the size difference. It's a little bit smaller versus the larger on the Torch 2. Higher resolution, things are going to look a little bit smaller here. Something to sort of keep in mind. All right, so next let's talk about browser. Since browser speed is super important to everyone, how is this going to perform in the browser department? So I go ahead and open up the browser on each. Uh, these are both connected to Wi-Fi, the same Wi-Fi network. The Torch 1 here doesn't have a SIM card in, uh, but the Torch 2 does. Uh, speaking of SIM cards, no support for HSPA Plus uh, to be found here, unfortunately, uh, just straight 3G. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up Techno Buffalo. I'll do the same thing here on the Torch 1. And we will check out whether or not the speed is fast or not fast. Uh, this is, of course, a site that's been loaded on both before. I'll go ahead and get it queued up here on the Torch 1. So cache hasn't been cleared. Just a sense of how a page would load if you were you know, visiting something you visit regularly, like perhaps Techno Buffalo. All right, so we've got it queued up on both. Same Wi-Fi network. Let's go ahead and launch them. And with the optical track feather, easy to launch them at the same time, pushing a physical button, always much easier. And look at that, Torch 1, uh, noticeably faster than Torch 2, which is still 
thinking about loading it. There it goes, and it's loading it all kinds of weird. Uh, and this is probably a problem with a early OS build, um, but I'm noticing a ton of browser difficulties here uh, when using the device. Something to uh, keep in mind, certainly that it should be fixed by the time this hits your pocket. Uh, but from a speed standpoint, you can see that, uh, well, you can check the status bar at the bottom there and see that top here on OS 7. Uh, they're both at about the same place, loading it over exactly the same Wi-Fi network. And once both these are loaded, we can get a chance to take a look at the screen too uh, and see how that increased resolution uh, affects the overall use of the device. So it looks like we are just about done on the Torch 2. And the Torch 1 is already finished, interestingly enough. So let me go ahead and talk about one of the things that I use the most on these phones, Pinch to Zoom. Uh, I like that we finally had a WebKit HTML capable browser on the Torch 1. I found it to be very slow. Uh, pinch to Zoom sometimes didn't always work. You can see it's jerky right there. And if you want to do a quick scrolling, you really always get that checkerboard pattern. So Pinch to Zoom. No flash support here uh, on either device versions. All right, so this is still loading uh, and is almost done. It's close but not quite. So clearly a huge speed difference uh, on the Torch 2, or on the Torch 1 rather than the Torch 2. Uh, that's something that I've seen on uh, other web pages as well. That's actually very indicative of the speeds. I'm hoping that that's just reminiscent again of being a pre-release hardware and pre-release software. All right, so while that's finishing up, let's go ahead and check some of the pinch to zoom and see how it works here. So pinch to zoom. Uh, it's much, much, much more fluid. Uh, this browser is much more usable. And as I go ahead and scroll, even despite that it's uh, not loading pages properly, you still get that checkerboard pattern, but not nearly uh, as much as you did on the Torch 1. And if you do them side by side, you can see it's a little much more responsive here on the left with the Torch 2. So it's not outstanding, uh, but it is nicer if you don't mind waiting the extra time uh, to get the page to load. So we'll go ahead and exit out of here and exit out of here. Uh, so other differences here, of course, we've got OS 7, which brings a ton of uh, new features, including the liquid graphics, which is just fancier way of saying. Things actually move smoothly. Uh, you've got voice search here, which does actually work. I go ahead and oops, open that up. I can go ahead and tap it and say voice, and let's see if it works. I'll go ahead and try it here on camera. Techno Buffalo. I'll go ahead and hit done. And there it is, Techno Buffalo. So now you can see it. Nothing uh, overly exciting. Uh, but it does work and works pretty well, as you'd expect from RIM. Uh, for those of you that have been following me for a while, you know I actually switched to BlackBerry. I switched to, um, you can see this guy right here actually, uh, 9780. And I've been really enjoying using BlackBerry products here. So I'm looking forward to the Torch 2 when we finally see a production model. Uh, so is this going to be worth the upgrade when it comes to the market? Well, right now it's really hard to tell as we're dealing with pre-release stuff. I have been using the Torch 2 though as my dedicated BlackBerry uh, for about the past three and a half days. I've been really impressed. It's working very, very well. Uh, some web page rendering issues uh, and some other sort of strange things have popped up. Uh, for example, Google Sync isn't compatible with OS 7 yet when you go to uh, m.google.com slash sync tells you it's not compatible. Google Maps, the same thing, not compatible. Uh, it's missing some operating system stuff that I was hoping was gonna be in there. Uh, for example, social feeds is nowhere to be found, but what is to be found, again, are a ton of at t branded things here. And I haven't had any problems with applications working either. Those that I can download from the App Store uh, are the same. And the App Store, or the, I should probably say it correctly, uh, the BlackBerry app world does look uh, exactly the same as previous versions. I know people have been asking that. Uh, and BBM looks exactly the same as well uh, as outgoing OS 6. Hopefully this helped answer some questions or maybe created a ton more questions. Uh, if you were deciding whether or not to get a Torch 2 or a 9900, not sure yet. If you want to upgrade from the Torch 1 to the Torch 2, I think it's probably going to be a worthwhile upgrade. But I don't know if I want to be tied to this guy for a two-year contract. The lack of any sort of 4G support, HSPA Plus or LTE, which is going to be very prevalent in the next two years, uh, might make it a tough sell. Is it the device that's going to save RIM? Certainly not. It's a very incremental upgrade. It's not revolutionary. It's evolutionary. Uh, but at least you now have a modern processor. 1.2 gigahertz uh, definitely makes this thing feel a bit zippier. I don't get the hourglass or a little... Anybody who's a BlackBerry knows a little sort of clock looking thing that spins around. Uh, I've seen that much, much, much less with the Torch 2. Hopefully this answer, hope, helped answer your questions. For a ton of Torch 2 coverage, of course, check out technobuffalo.com for all your tech news. Uh, I am John Rettinger, and I will see you in the next video.
of the Torch 2 from a hard boot up from a battery pull uh, is about two and a half minutes compared to like this, almost six minutes here um, of the Torch 1. So I'll go ahead and leave this in for at least for a few minutes. And if you guys want to watch the end of the video, you are welcome to. Uh, you can almost see it like competition. See those lines just keep growing. Uh, the Torch 2 is much, much, much faster. So it looks like I'm actually a dirty liar. All right, so both are booted up, and it looks like I'm